before we could start on the actual body work, I needed to remove a couple of the sprues that hold up the roof so it doesn't collapse during shipping. For this, I'm using my new Wonder Cutter, which was set out to me by Cutra. Thank you very much, guys, for standing this wonderful tool out. If you want to know more about it, I will leave links in the description below. So with all of these sprues removed from the main body, there were also a couple of sprues attached to the rear spoiler, the side skirts, and also the upper bit of the rear spoiler as well, which of course needs to be carefully removed and then refined a bit as well with that mold line that is left from those sprues to be removed. For that, on the main bulk piece, I'm using my Proxon rotary tool, and of course the refinement will be done with some sanding sponges, even some sanding sticks, and maybe some files as well to get it nice and neat. With the rough work now done, I could move on to refining them a bit and cleaning them up with some sanding sticks and sanding sponges before gluing it all together. I did do a quick test fit to see if it all fit perfectly well, which it did, so I could then move on to finishing off the body work in order for those panels to be installed. Firstly, I'm just going to go over all of the panel lines, removing a bit of trash that is in some of the panel lines, scribing them out and making them nice and neat. Before gluing the front and rear bumper on and also the side skirts, I want to give it a light sand on both the surfaces which need to be glued together just to give it a bit of an extra bite for the glue to help it stick together permanently. To align the parts and also hold them in place a little bit, I'm using some super glue, but for the permanent bonding, I'm going to be using some epoxy. This is for one to give a really strong bond between the body and the actual side skirts and or front bumper as well. But there is also a little bit of a gap and I'm planning on adding some neon to this as I've had about a thousand comments that I should do this. I kind of agree, although it is a lot of work and I haven't really figured out how I want to do that. But just in preparation, if I'm going to do it, I want to seal these lines so no light can go through these and look weird. So I'm just using the epoxy to seal it all together and give it a nice smooth bond on the inside for a super strong finish in the end. Some of the body work also needed a bit of fixing, so I used some sanding sticks and some files just to align all the body parts together and make it a perfect seam. Now if you guys have any suggestions on what I want to use for the neon, please leave comments down below. I thought about adding some LEDs or even some of those LED strips which you can change color on really easily with a remote, but I'm not really sure if that is the right solution. So if you have any input, feel free to send a comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are on this. So in the meantime, I'm just moving on to scribing out some of the panel lines. Some of these needed a little bit of adjustment as they were just a bit too tight. So scribing them out makes them a bit wider and also a bit deeper so they don't disappear after a couple good coats of paint. With all of the body panels now glued together and all the lines straightened out, it was time to give it a light sanding with some 400 grit in order to get it ready for primer. Mm -hmm. 
All of the dust was removed with a soft brush. I blew over it with some air, put it on the Tamiya spray stand and started on those hard to reach, easy to forget spots with some Tamiya Gray primer. This is primer suitable for plastic metal and also works really, really well on resin. So that is my go-to primer for these kinds of builds. Two light coats of primer were applied. I then let that sit for a couple of hours before moving on to sanding it again. After, of course, aligning some of the body panels with a couple rougher files and sanding sticks, and also sanding the entire body with 400 grit, it can leave a couple rougher sand scratches, which of course need to be sanded out. So the first coats of primer were applied just to fill those up, and then that was smoothed out and evened out with a bit of sanding for a 600 grit, and while sanding the entire body, I'm of course checking it over as well to see if there are any imperfections or problems that need to be fixed. On the rear boot, there were a couple of parts that needed some filling, so I added some light curing putty from Tamiya, cured it and sanded it smooth, and that was done on the entire body where it needed it, of course. Then it was cleaned off again, all the dust was removed, and back into the spray booth it went for another couple coats of primer to smoothen it all out. Two coats of primer later, a couple of hours of cure time, and it was time to sand it all smooth. I decided to use a 3000 grit sanding sponge to get all the imperfections out and get it as smooth as I possibly could before I started applying the paint. The paint I'm going to be using is from Street Blisters. It's an original Honda color, Granada Black. It is a super dark black with a bit of a metallic flake in it, and I'm pretty sure this is the actual color used on the cars, but it of course isn't really all that well shown in the movie as they just seem black in all of the scenes. Nonetheless, all of the parts were painted, of course, in this color, firstly starting off with those hard to reach east forget spots, which there are quite a lot of on this one, on the side skirts, the front bumper, and also the rear bumper. There are lots. So those were firstly covered with a round spray tip that was quickly changed to the fan spray for the larger areas. Then again, I let it move on to curing for a bit in between coats and started the process all over again for the second and third coat. After the first coat was applied, I let it cure for about five minutes, sprayed some other parts in between like the mirrors, the spoiler, and some other pieces that needed to be painted black as well. Then I moved back onto the body for a second coat. Now it is important to note the body on this one is resin, and that means it can handle thicker coats of paint a lot better. I'm applying a really, really thick coat of paint. As you can see, it is nice and glossy, and that does make it a lot smoother. However, if the body was plastic, I would not advise to put on paint this thick, specifically paints like these, which are a cellulose thinner or a lacquer paint that can actually bite into the plastic. So be aware of what you're painting and how thick of a coat you are applying. Resin and metal bodies can handle this a lot better, and again, plastic cannot. So if this were a plastic kit, I would probably apply about five coats in total instead of the two or three coats that I'm applying here. So after applying that second coat of paint, I moved on to applying a third coat of paint, but then again, starting on those hard to reach, easy to forget spots, making sure those were all fully covered. So from the fan tip, I moved back onto the round tip that is easily just removed. You just screw off the top, then remove the round tip and go back to the fan tip after you've done all those hard to reach spots and you're good to go for the larger areas again. So in between switching between the round tip and also the fan tip, I'm not really sure which one I prefer yet. It is easy enough to remove it and move it over to the other tip, so that isn't really that big of a deal. You can easily just swap it and use whichever you want, but I personally feel like I kind of prefer the round tip as it has a bit more control, but then again, that fan tip is really nice for all the larger areas, but it does also spray out a lot of paint. Nonetheless, I'm still experimenting and seeing what I like and where I like it, so I'm just going to be swapping between tips in between the paint jobs, of course. So with that said and done, the base coat was applied in three coats. I let that cure for about 30 minutes and then looked up the reference photos to see if I needed to apply any decals, and it turns out that it was completely blank. So in the exterior, I did not need to put on any decals, so I could just move straight on to the clear coat. Of course, I'm using some Street Blisters 2K Clear as well here. That was mixed up and applied on those hard to reach, easy to forget spots, then moving over to the fan tip again for the main body part. 
It is going on nice and smooth, so about two coats will do it for this one. After the first coat was applied, I let it sit and cure for about five minutes and then moved on to the second coat. In the meantime, I'm just leaving the paint inside of the airbrush, setting it aside and picking it back up five minutes later for that second coat to be applied. After finalizing the second coat, I was really happy with the way that it finished. It did have a little bit of orange peel here and there, so it does require a bit of sanding. And there is also some dust on a couple of those flat spots like the boot and also on the hood as well. There is a really big one, so that of course needs to be fixed. But in the meantime, I'm just going to let it cure and then properly polish it in a further video for the series. In the meantime, I will probably move on to the interior and also start to work on the chassis and figuring out the LEDs for the neon. Again, if you have any suggestions on how to do that, please leave a comment down below.